Welcome to our podcast. This is Friends on Fire. I'm Mike. I'm a lifelong devotee of financial independence. I even wrote a book about it. And I'm Maggie, a newer convert, but just as passionate, especially on the intersection of minimalism and financial independence. We're one and the same. We are two like-minded friends who believe that talking about money with your friends and family opens the door to financial well-being. The Friends on Fire podcast is about dispelling myths, building financial acumen, and sharing your financial independence journey with the people you care about. This is Friends on Fire. Hey, Mike. Hey, Maggie. What's going on? Uh, you know, just the usual. Finished up a day of work and excited to get on this podcast and talk about finance with you. Yeah, me too. So I'm excited about this episode because I know you had other rental properties outside of the country. Like you guys have some something going on in Germany. Who knows what? That's right. But you just bought a new property, right? I did. I bought one in the U.S., which I was sure I was never going to do. But this one's a little bit different because I actually started a real estate investment company, Maggie. With somebody else, Mike. With another friend Have who is also on fire. about this? I thought we had like a friends on fire contract. I didn't know you could be on fire with other friends. Uh, well, the purpose of this podcast is to talk to other people about money. In fact, she is a older friend on fire than I know. you I'm, are. I'm just kidding. I actually, I know. I know this person. I met her through you and I really like her. So I'm glad you guys are starting this gig together. What's interesting is she and I became friends the exact same way that you and I did. We worked together. She asked for help AT&T. on her taxes? Uh, no, she asked for she asked for help on her benefits and her like 401k investment stuff. And so I would help her and help her whole team. And we became friends that way. And so we've been friends a long time. We'd like, we like talked about this stuff periodically because we both have rental properties already. And it's like, as you know, from doing this podcast, when you have somebody who has complementary skills and can also take some of the work off your plate, it makes for just a great working relationship. Yeah. And so we decided to pull the trigger. We created an LLC. We have operating agreement. We have like our strategies all outlined and we purchased our first place in Atlanta. And Mike, how did you, the whole process of deciding to like actually set up an LLC and all of that, like just very briefly, how did you decide on that? And then what did you do? Just like Google how to do it? Well, yeah, I definitely, I Google how to do everything, but we decided to do it formally because the LLC gives you, you know, LLC stands for limited liability company. And it gives you, it gives the partners of, or the owners of the company a little bit more protection. It separates your personal finances from the company. But if you do that, you actually like, it has to be formal and real. Like you need to have an operating agreement. You need to have like regular meetings. You need to file stuff with the state. Otherwise, you, if you're sued, you just say like, you're not an LLC. You just like, Paid fifty bucks. Set one up, yeah. Kind of thing, but anyway. So we wanted to do this for real, both to protect both of us in case something didn't work out in the business relationship, but also just to be structured about it and have a plan and make sure that we could make decisions quickly that were aligned with our strategy. So we started this company. We bought our place, and today we're going to talk about on the show how rental properties can help grow wealth. Love it. All right. So I think a lot of people hear from people who are involved in real estate, and those people describe it as just a super lucrative, very easy way to make a living. You hear about it on TV with HGTV. It seems like it's too good to be true, and it usually is. So real estate is like any other investment. And if you were to take away anything from this episode, it's these things. All investments, real estate included, comes with risk. All investments take experience and a lot of work. And all investments require money to start out. Doesn't matter if you're buying stocks or you're buying a house, all of those things are going to apply. And so you need to find the investment that works best for your financial situation and your life. Real estate may be it, may not be. One of the best things I've ever heard in terms of advice about rental properties and whether to get in that, you know, business per se is 
less even on the money angle, right? Like we'll, we'll talk about kind of some of the high level things you need to consider from a financial perspective and that you've considered, Mike, as you've gone into this deal. But one of the things that I've, I've loved hearing from different people is like, you got to have the stomach for it, right? Because there can be a lot of ups and downs, a lot of stuff you got to deal with, with tenants and other things. And so, you know, we could talk about some of the downsides um, at the end of this, but I, I, I like to always keep that front of mind of like, there's the whole financial aspect, but then there's just the like, you got to have the stomach to deal with the ups and downs because it won't always be smooth, right? Like you, even when you were closing, right? You had some like last mm-hmm. minute issues and like- yeah. That kind of stuff happens all day long to any homeowner. And if you're doing rental properties, you're now a you know homeowner times two, three, four, and the issues can multiply. It's important to know what you're looking for and have a plan. And when my friend and I were looking for our first place, like we had, we went through months of talking about our strategy, figuring out where we were going to look, what the place needed to have. And we had narrowed this down so well and gotten so so grounded in our understanding of what we were looking for that what happened was after months of looking i got a text message and she says we found it you in question mark and and like i spent literally two minutes looking at the listing and at that point we knew what boxes we needed to have checked it checked those boxes we put in an offer that day it got accepted i mean it was this all happened within a matter of hours yeah. And uh, it's different than like when you're buying a home to live in, which you like just sweat over. Well, it's for, so emotional, oh, right? You yeah, care what, emotional. Yeah. You care like what something looks like. Like you're not tied to all that stuff on a rental property. You're worried about the numbers. Right. Rental properties work financially for a few reasons. And these are the things that we had established beforehand. The first is that you need to find a place that will actually rent. Will people want to live there? This is critical. If you are going to have a place that is vacant, some or all of the time, it is not a rental investment and you do not want it. The second point is that unless you have the cash, you're going to need a down payment. And typically that's 20%, could be a little bit more. If you go less, you're going to, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. I don't recommend those. So whatever you're buying, you're going to need a lot of cash up front in order to do this. Mm-hmm. And so make sure you got that figured out. And then you get a mortgage for the remaining 80%. And the borrowing of money for real estate is one of the keys, which I'll talk about. Borrowing money to buy something that generates income is called leverage. It is a great way to make money. That's how the modern economy works. And then the rent that you will receive, your revenue needs to cover your cost. And so there's a number of calculations and there's calculators all over the internet that will do this for you. But you need to make sure that the money you're taking in is going to cover all these expenses and you can't be losing money. That is not the purpose of an investment. So there's a bunch of misconceptions. And I think we've all kind of heard these things. You know, the purpose of the episode is to address the myths and provide a little bit of guidance of what you should look for. The biggest misconception is that rental properties just churn off cash that you're just going to, you're covering your costs and you're going to make a thousand or $2,000 more in positive cash flow every month. And this is great and it's easy. And it is not like that at all. You will not have a super cash flow positive property unless it is just a very unique situation. The majority of these things are going to, you may make a little bit more cash than your expenses, but in all likelihood, it's going to be about break even. And the profit comes from somebody paying the principal amount on your mm-hmm. mortgage, not from you making a lot of extra cash. And often the appreciation over time of that exactly. property is the where the profit, that's right. the long-term gain there. Um, So some other misconceptions are that it's passive income, right? So like I said earlier, just in terms of like having the stomach, like this is hard work. So even just the amount of work, Mike, that you put into getting up to this point. And I, my husband and I have a rental property that was one of his first houses. So we didn't go through all this work to like find a great deal um, or or something that, you know, was meant for a rental, but it became a kind of accidental rental, rental property that we've decided to hold on to. It's a lot of work. So we had tenants in it for like eight years straight. They left, we had to turn it. It was a ridiculous amount of work for a property that we don't live in for you know a few months. And so there's a lot of ways you can outsource that work, but that cuts into your cash mm-hmm. flow. And so that's a trade-off you need to decide. And like we've personally decided recently 
to not outsource as much stuff. We do outsource some pieces of it, but we've, we've been doing a lot of it ourselves because we want to you know, maintain as much of that profit as possible. You know, I think the last misconception is related to that is just that it's easy, right? If it were easy, everybody would do this and everybody would become millionaires from doing it. And this is my, this has come up so much recently, Mike, just the idea of like get rich quick schemes and just, Mm -hmm. you know, there's so much of this on like social media and multi-level marketing things and just all these things where people think that there's some like quick, easy way to make money and to, you know, quote, get rich. And in reality, rental property is just like so many other things, right? It takes hard work. It takes putting in time. It is not an overnight thing. And it it is work. It's hard work. And I think the thing that I harp on recently is hard work is how you make money. Yes, yeah. there's some people who have made money other ways and have gotten lucky and have fallen into some thing where they really don't have to do a lot of work. And I think what's nice about rental properties is it it can become some passive income from time to time. Like sometimes we'll go six months and we don't hear from a tenant. We're like, this is lovely. We don't have to do anything. But then there's another six months. Like we just had an issue with uh, a bunch of repair stuff that we had to deal with and it wasn't simple to fix. And it's hard work, right? On top of everything else. So I'll get off that point. (laughs) Yeah. I think you hammer that one home. Yeah, it's it's hard work is what I'm hearing. It's hard work. That's my rambling slash context. And I'll also add to that and say, you can make money and it will always be hard work. You need to buy the right place. You could very well buy the wrong place and it will require the same amount of work and you'll lose money. So this is like any other investment. Can, Can I give you a really quick aside that has nothing to do with rental properties? Okay. You saw that one of my kids just came in here and yeah. was like walking behind me and uh, they were like waving at you and stuff in the background. Uh-huh. The fact that they did not speak and interrupt us is fascinating. And it must be because I'm talking into a microphone because all day long, my kids will come in and I am face to face with like one person or 10 people on a video call and they will just come in and interrupt with the most ridiculous things. And they have like no shame in interrupting. And I'm like, what is it about this microphone that made someone not? Is it like a magical microphone where I just. I think it's that they respect my authority. They respect the podcast. No, I think that they respect me. You specifically. Well, they don't respect anybody else that I work with. (laughs) Yeah, that's okay. Um, Or it's getting late in the day and they've lost their uh, will to interrupt me. (laughs) Lost energy. Okay. So back to real estate. All right. So. Let's talk about why real estate is actually a great investment if you play your cards right. Money, money, money. Oh, man. Hope YouTube doesn't flag us for- Oh, uh, right. Every time I sing songs, we get flagged. (laughs) It's because of my beautiful singing voice. That's exactly right. All right. First thing, I touched on this earlier. It is easy to borrow money for real estate. It is unlike other investments. You can't really easily borrow 80% of something to go buy stocks. Like that's just not an option that's available to a lot of people, but everybody can go get a mortgage usually. And it's called debt when it's bad. It's called leverage when it's good. So you're borrowing money and then reaping the returns on the full amount, even though you've only put in a portion of it. So let's take a look at my real example of the house I just bought. We bought it for 265 and we put down $66,000. So $33,000 each, which was a 25% down payment. We're going to be renting it for $2,000 a month, which is $24,000 a year. And so we put down $66,000 in cash and we will pull in $24,000 in revenue. That's almost 10% of the purchase price and almost half of the amount of cash we put forward. There are not other investment opportunities which provide this type of return. The return on cash is about 50%. I mean, that's crazy. Now, of course, you have to pay back the mortgage. You have all these other costs. This is not profit. But the fact that you could go generate that much revenue with so little money up front is what makes real estate different than other investments and can make it quite lucrative if all of the things work out in your favor. Yeah. Another reason why you might want to invest in real estate or a benefit is real estate is relatively stable. So if you have a place where people want to live, which was obviously one of the criteria, Mike, for when you were looking for your property was just that it was a neighborhood that you felt good about in terms of the current and future potential. 
if you have a place where people want to live, like in the heart of Atlanta, um, the value will almost always go up, right? It's it's very rare, especially long term, right? There could be mm-hmm. some like dips where like, you know, 2020, there certainly have been areas that might see a decline, but in the course of a few years um, and you, you know, picking a, a stable area, you will see the value go up. Or sorry, I should say you will likely see the value go up. And it kind of goes back to the conversation we had about why paying off your mortgage could be a good investment. Real estate, as you mentioned, very stable. And so if you have a ton of money in the stock market, putting some more money in real estate to balance out your overall net worth is a good idea because then you have some aggressive stocks and some less aggressive, more stable real estate investments. The third thing that makes real estate different is that it's sort of self-sustaining. So your renter pays your expenses and also pays the principal on your mortgage and maybe pays you a little bit of extra cash. And so for going back to my example, we put down $66,000. We're also putting some repairs into it. But then in theory, we will never put forward any more cash into this property. The renter- yeah, What's your will, mortgage? Including- Taxes and insurance, I think it's like 13, 50 okay, or something. Yeah. So yeah, you're netting 700 a month. We have some additional costs in there, like landscaping and other stuff oh, we need right. to do. But yeah, we're, we will be cash flow positive. On Wait this. a minute. You're going to pay someone to take care of the yard? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go drive a half well, hour away to go mow the lawn. Uh, in all seriousness, I was joking because you give me such a hard time about it. But our rental agreement, which have I shared it with you? Did I send you our rental contract? I'm interested in seeing it. We put a t- we we bought a template and then we compared it to like five others that we know of through different companies and we, anyways the the renters are responsible for the landscaping. There are different ways that you can do this, yeah. and I, but essentially people are going to look at the total cost that they're going to pay, and the market will determine what you're able to charge. And so if we are going to charge two thousand dollars, and then also charge them like a hundred dollars a month for landscaping, they're going to see it as twenty one hundred. And that means they would effectively only want to pay nineteen hundred in rent and then a hundred dollars for landscaping. It's not like we can just give them unlimited costs and make it still competitive with other options out there. Oh yeah, I was more saying in the way that you think in your own home, which is you manage your own landscaping, you do uh-huh. it yourself. And so, I don't care if my tenants want to go pay a landscaper or do it themselves. That's their decision on how much money they want to spend versus Mm -hmm. take a cheaper approach. It's just, it's their accountability. But it's an interesting point. Yeah. I guess the risk would be that they decide I'm never going to mow this lawn ever. And then you know what? It is in your contract. They have to. So Mm -hmm. they're defaulting at that point. And then if they do something where they're not taking care of the yard and then you have to pay for a bunch of stuff when they leave, you can take it out of their deposit because it is in your contract that they were supposed to maintain it on a monthly basis. You bring up a very valid point. I will bring it up with my business partner. And I will send you uh, our contract. We put a lot of time into it. It's very, uh, well, anyways, keep going. Uh, I no longer remember what point I was trying to make. You were on uh, number three, that it's uh, self-sustaining. Yeah. So we put in this cash up front and then it just pays for itself over time. The principal gets paid by the renters. We eventually own the place fully, no more mortgage, and it is also appreciated in value. And so this is why it's uh, it can be a great investment. Cool. Do you have renters yet, by the way? No, not yet. We're still, we're doing the renovations. Oh, right. right, Yeah. I would argue you can be looking for renters while you are doing the renovations. Problem is we're adding a full bathroom. And so we want to be able to like list it as a different type of place than what we bought it for. And so I would still argue you could run that in parallel pass, but I'll, I'll, well, I'll tell you why offline longer. Story. <laughs> All right. Let's... Only because we did, we, we were able to do it successfully. A lot of people, especially in a high demand area, they've got imagination. They can wait and trust that you're going to build a really nice bathroom or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you might be able to have it rented and not have a month where it's like empty and you're showing it, which costs you two grand. And we okay. were we, we were like, what the hell? It can't hurt to try. Let's put it up and see if there's any bites. And like we got bites and people who had a big imagination and could trust that we were going to do the work. And we mm-hmm. did some pretty big work before they moved in. I didn't realize this episode was going to be full of advice for me <laughs> personally. This is great. Yeah, look at that. Well, thank you. Okay. And then the fourth reason, just in terms of why real estate is different and beneficial, is over time you can cash out refinance and use that appreciation to leverage up and buy another property. You also can just straight cash out. And so one thing that is helpful to know about real estate that 
is similar to stocks and you know other investments and things you could put your money in is if you decide you don't want to do it anymore, you can decide to sell the property, right? If for some reason you're just like, you know what, I don't want to deal with this anymore, or this isn't the right area for me, or whatever it is, you always have that asset that you can decide. I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to sell it like six months later, but um, you have options. It's not This is not a forever deal that you're in. And there's lots of people who get into a property, have it for five, 10 years, or even just a few years and decide that they want to you know, shift to something else. Yeah. That's or point. you can, like, like the initial point, you can actually do a cash out refinance and use that to buy another property, which was the initial point. There are a number of reasons why real estate can be a great investment. And if this is something you're interested in, like if you get excited thinking about this stuff and you're willing to put forth the work, go for it because it can be great fun. It can be very rewarding and quite lucrative, but we need to cover the downsides And so we don't need to harp on these too much, but let me just run through some bullets. First one, you're going to need a ton of cash. You're going to need cash for the down payment. You're going to need cash to fix stuff that you didn't know. You're going to need cash to do renovations. You will need money to start. It is a relatively illiquid investment. Is illiquid even a word? I don't know, but it's funny that I just said, oh, you could just sell it whenever you want. But you're right. You can't because there's times when the market's bad, you would take a huge loss. So you can't just sell it whenever you want. Or you, right. You, yeah. It takes time. So you that's need to your pay commissions on it. Why don't you define what liquid means so people know? Liquid would mean something that is sort of acts like cash. So if I go buy a stock, I can go in in two seconds and go sell $10 million of it. I don't yeah. have $10 million of stock stocks. But you could go sell that much in a fraction of a second and you're out. With a house, you need to get an agent and you need to list it and you need to wait and there need to be inspections and then like stuff happens. Like it is not something that you can turn over very quickly. Yeah. Um so I would not consider it liquid. Yeah. So then it would be illiquid, illiquid. if that's a word. I'm you know now that I wrote it down, I'm pretty sure it's not a word, but let's just I want to look it up on. while you're talking. All right, third one, you can get bad renters. Um, they could destroy the place. It, they could it, give by the you way, headaches. illiquid is a word. It is and a word. And when you Google it, what immediately suggests uh, comes up is illiquid real estate. So oh, illiquid funny. of assets not easily converted into cash. There you go. Oh, That's a word. Well, then I, I guess I. <laughs> One of the frequently asked questions is, is real estate illiquid? Keep hmm. going. All right, good. Well, bad renters. Used a real word. All right, so bad renters, um, they will make your life a living nightmare. So you need to buy in a place where you know you're going to be able to find good renters. And then you need to go through the effort of screening them and making sure they're quality. Yeah. Checking their references, screening them, um, having a very tight contract so mm-hmm. that you've got, you know, the right, the right rules and kind of situations where you can kick somebody out if you need to and you know, all that yeah. jazz. But references are like number one there. If you just get legit references it can really help. The other one, which we talked about a bit here, is just house problems, right? So there. this is back to the point of like, if you have the stomach for it, there's constantly issues. And you are, if you're using a property management company, you're paying a big premium for somebody else to deal with all of those house problems. You're still footing the bill for it, but they're the middleman that's going to help like find a contractor, deal with the tenant, all that stuff. If you're doing it yourself... I got a call a week ago. I got a text of like the hot water heater's not working. This is broken, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I'm not knocking the tenants, right? That is my job, right? They're they are living in that house. They are paying a market value rent to live there and they should have a, you know, working house. But like any homeowner, things go wrong, things break, things have to be fixed. Um, and so you probably live in your own house and then to also have to deal with additional homes and the repairs and the work for that. Um, and there's little stuff and then there could be big stuff, right? So there could be big complicated things that you know aren't take a lot of your time and just take a lot of money um but that's uh what you're planning for kind of in the long term just like with your house your own personal house is you know there's times when the costs are low and it's pretty stable and then there's times when you got to pay 10 grand for some big expense and you you know hope that that spreads out over some course of time next one is that it's it's a relatively long term play Kind of like what I was talking about with the buying and selling of stocks, which you can do rapidly. Like it takes time to actually go find a place and then buy it and close on the house and fix it up and get renters. Like unless you are flipping houses, which is a totally different thing and much harder, I would say. Like this is this is a long-term activity, which is going to generate stable returns 
but not very fast returns. You need to have the right time horizon for this. Yeah. And the last point, which we've said a number of times, and I, I think it's just the most important is you got to have a stomach for this, right? It, it's it's half mental. It's half your time. It's just the fortitude of, can you deal with a tenant, right? And somebody who you know is going to be coming to you with issues and questions and you know things that they want. And can you deal with the, you know, stress, time, again, everything, money that will come up from time to time of there'll be really smooth times where you, you know, have somebody that you don't hear from for two years and everything's super smooth. And then you could, I hear of these, I've never had it personally, but you'll hear of these crazy stories where you have people who ruin your property, refuse to leave. You got to get the police to come in and physically remove them. You got to get, you know, just all, you got to hire a lawyer, you got to go to court, you know, all these things. And so there can be really tough situations in the rental property business. And, and again, you got to have the stomach for it. So do not get into owning rental properties if you don't have the fortitude and the stomach for it. And if you don't, there's a lot of other places you can invest your money and things you can do that are, you know, may not be as lucrative in some ways longer term, but are you know, more conservative and safer and easier and, you know, put your money in an index fund if you don't have the stomach for dealing with real estate. So let's wrap this up with three key takeaways. The first is that rental properties are an investment like anything else. There is risk and there are no guarantees. Number two, the benefits of a rental property as an investment come primarily from the ability to borrow money for it. And then number three, It requires a lot of work. We've been talking about this like in every single section. If you're not ready for the repairs, tenants, headaches, don't do it. And uh, related to that, Mike, remember that providing good customer service is important, right? So there's like being ready for it. But I often think when I'm dealing with my tenant, I'm like, you know what? They're paying me money every month. I am their, you know, quote, landlord. I'm like, I would like to be just the same way that I want to be a good boss and leader at work. I want to be a good landlord, right? I want to be nice. I want to not get frustrated if they're frustrated by something. I want to, you know, just provide a great experience for them. I think is a nice way to think about it too if you are getting into this business, like be a nice person. Be a landlord that you would want to have if you were renting. Cuz a lot of people quite honestly that are renting, some of them are just doing it cuz they prefer that over owning, but a lot of people that are renting are doing it because they don't have a choice. They are not able to qualify to own a property themselves or to get a loan or whatever it might be. And so, um, you know, I just think making the experience great for someone is something that you can do as a landlord that is nice and the right, the right approach and the right thing to do. All right. Maggie's minute on the mic. Okay. What is it? I got a question for you. What is your longer term plan with your rental property? Um, that's a good question. 60 seconds. Oh, geez. That's a good question. So, We don't necessarily have one. We have considered selling it. We had some tenants that have been there in there for eight years. When they moved, we strongly considered selling it. We looked at the numbers. We thought about it. We were going to have to put some money into it either way. And we decided because we could quickly find a tenant, like I was like, I'm going to put on Zillow. I'm going to see how quickly we're able to rent it What before we had even done all these repairs. We were able to rent it so quickly at a good price that we were like, you know what? Let's keep it on the market for now. We don't really have a long-term plan. We wanted to just, we were like, you know, we already own it. So we were like, let's just kind of play it by ear for a few years, see how it goes with these tenants. Um, And as long as it's working for us, we'll keep it. If it ever gets to the point where it's like too much of a headache, but we plan on having more and more free time over the years. And so for us, it's a good passive income, you know, additional investment for us. And it helps diversify our portfolio. So I think we'll hang on to it, but... I don't really have a long-term plan, honestly. Um, you are like right at one minute. Woo! I, I, this is the this is a first. I'm not even sure what your answer it's was. I was watching the clock, and it, you, were, it, you, were like you, at, you were like you were like at 62 you, I seconds. I thought you were counting me. I was like, I feel like you're not listening. You're counting. Listen, I was, I was Mike, definitely not listening. This is the you. new four day Maggie. I'm focused. I'm, I'm on super it. Super impressed. I don't ramble anymore. No, I just you provide definitely context. ramble. You just you, you just took a, a momentary break from rambling. <laughs> I'm just You're tired. getting better. You're improving. Look at that. Baby steps. Thanks. Appreciate the feedback. All right. This was fun. Um, I hope it was helpful. And uh, if you have any specific questions about real estate or rental properties, definitely give us a call or text us. Leave us a voicemail or text us. 
404-981-3370 or hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. And if you've been challenged or inspired by what you've heard, please rate and review the show. It helps other people find our show. You can also subscribe and make sure you never miss an episode. All right, Maggie. Okay. Thanks. Good luck with your rental property. Thank you. I appreciate it. Maybe we'll come back with some uh, some update episodes as we yeah. get further into Can't it. Can't wait to hear how it goes. All right. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Bye.